All right, uh, this is uh, State of Florida versus Eric Shane Terrell, 18 CT 2900, 18 MM 801. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Gorgian. Good afternoon. Did All you, right. Did you want to take my case first? Maybe a bit lengthy. I'm a bit I have to take your case first. Oh, okay. Um, good afternoon, Jack. Good afternoon. All right, is this Mr. Terrell? Yes, this is. All right. Uh, sir, uh, we had a, a couple matters set for this afternoon. Um, I received a motion from you. Um, there was a request for a Nelson hearing. I did have a chance to read that. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen that. Okay, well, it was, it was, it was sent to me. I, uh, I filed it um, into showcase. It's part of the court file. I don't want to talk too much here, Judge, unless I'm asked to. However, were you going to be able to read that? I'm sorry, what was that? Were you going to have time to look it over? I did read it. Thank you, I misunderstood you. You know, I read it. Um, it's Mr. Gorgian who, who hasn't read it yet. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, in this, sir, you... Um, you know, you expressed your displeasure with Mr. Gorgian's services. Unfortunately, yes. And so what I'm required to do is, I guess the first question is, um, you, know, you understand, you know, a request for a Nelson hearing is basically you're telling me you want me to discharge Mr. Gorgian, who is appointed counsel and give you a new attorney. Is that what you're telling me? Please do. So I was wondering if that was to be done, how long could it take before I ask you a new lawyer? Because I've been, I've been having a hard time here. Uh, I've suffered a battery at uh, Motley Jail in 2020 and I've damaged my uh, right well, side. And uh, I also, uh, there, I mean, this is relevant. It's not put the same case about a boss carrying in my ear. I had another emergency. I was going to be speaking to the auto and I had something stuck in my ear. I was sitting there with a pen because I wouldn't pump it up. It's an excruciating pain. And I well, just poked my ear from with a pen trying to get the thing out. Well, hold on, Mr. Mr. Terrell. Mr. Terrell. Yes, sir. I don't have any ACM. It's probably why I have a hard time sometimes. But I don't know. Yes, sir. I'm listening. It's okay. Listen, before I, before I can get to all of that, um, the, what a Nelson inquiry is, is for me to determine whether or not your complaints about Mr. Gorgian are sufficient for me to find that he has not provided competent counsel. Because if he has, under the definition in the law, um, I cannot simply uh, discharge him and give you a new lawyer. All right? Okay. So, I have, so I, I have to... So I, I have my medication there because they don't give it to me, so I kind of trail off, which is probably why... I sometimes find myself in trouble. However, I would, I would like to say that every conversation we had, it took me six months to follow me. The first time he was in court, he technically wasn't my lawyer on paper until, you know, I had court on September 11th, and he technically didn't come, become my lawyer until October 5th on paper. And you were at the first court that told him that I wanted this situation resolved sooner, that he had to file a motion. It took him six months to file a motion, and it took him six months to get a video. On watching the video, he explains to me that it's not my best interest or whatever. I, I'm seeing it as if he watched the video and he realized that there was certain things in this video, not to mention the discovery itself, to where I shouldn't be incarcerated right now and my rights were violated. And that he wants to exclude the video because there's any further uh, action, civil action in the future, that I wouldn't be able to have the evidence that he can only use what was presented in the trial. For evidence in a civil case. And I'm just, I, I, right now I like to let the bygones be bygones and go on my way because I, I, I pretty much want to get back to my life. I, I think I learned the skills of the, the, the well, well, situation. Let, 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 let me stop you there, sir. Sure. And this officer, excuse me, this officer accused me of being a 
Sir, 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 hold on, stop for a moment. I can only I can only address one thing at a time, all right? Right now, I have to focus on what your specific complaints are about Mr. Gordon. So what I heard you say was that there was a motion you wanted him to file that had not been filed, that there's a video that you want to have put into evidence if this case goes to trial that Mr. Gorgian thinks should be excluded. Was there anything else specifically that you think Mr. Gorgian should have done um, and didn't do or did do that he should not have done? And then I'll give you a chance to respond. I mean, also, um, he's trying to explain to me, he's trying to scare tactics against me saying that, oh, I was going to spend two years in jail, possibly. And my understanding that he should have been the one to file the motion that happened in front of current six months ago instead of waiting until the last time to try and report the trial um, and make me use him as my lawyer. Because I told him he was fired three times. And at the bond hearing that it took him six months to get, I told the judge that I wanted to bring the lawyer. That's why I'm here today. Um, so basically, he would have been my concurrent for six months. You know, if I wasn't to be found guilty in this case, then I'd be twice too much time. Not only that, um, he, uh, excuse me. Um, I'm trying to collect my thoughts here. That, that, right. was, that was another thing there. Um, he also, uh, because I told him that I wanted to be a lawyer, I had a free trial the next day. I guess that's why they made me set this Nelson hearing where it was my motion. If you didn't receive my motion, maybe we wouldn't be having a Nelson hearing. Because I had a free trial the next day, and because I was uh, against him and what he wanted to do, he wanted to have him waive my, he was sneaky about it, he wanted to have him waive my parents at the free trial and try to set up for the trial. Well, uh, that that part I can answer for you. Um, For the pre-trials, most defendants' appearances are waived, particularly the folks who are in custody just at the pre-trial because we're doing it on Zoom. And so technologically, it's been a little bit challenging. But for the rest of it, would you you please respond to what the gentleman is indicating, particularly what what motion was it that you want him to file? A motion to set bond? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Mr. Matura, uh, I'm going to ask some questions so we can understand what your issues are. Now, one of the issues that you raised is that I spoke to you and I told you that you're going to be, you could be sentenced up to two years. Correct? Yes, that's correct. You told me that I could be sentenced up for two years, but I, I find that highly unlikely if you're doing your job and they would have been married in the first place. Explain to me how it would help me that they were separate. I don't understand how that would help me at all. I think that's one of the issues, yes. You're, and also, you asked me to file a motion to get you a bond. And you're, okay. you're, 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 yes, sir. I'm not any that you did that. However, you didn't file a motion to get the certification from the officer because he was about, I say, 25 years old. And uh, he's accusing me of being on drugs, and he should be able to testify to the fact that anyone was on drugs. He's accusing me of something I didn't do. Also, I told him, you know, what was in my car, that he should get that and then test it, right? So if they didn't test my medication, and they didn't count it, they didn't document it, I obviously have a problem, right? Okay, I can't have my whole life on medication. Three months now, it's very hard for me to do this right now. I hate to admit it. I hate to admit that about myself, but I'm a totally different person. I am a medicine, okay? And I did not have it any of that time. So, Mr. Preserve, uh, Mr. Trump, you've asked me to file a motion to get a certificate of the arresting officer. What certificate? I want to know if he has a certificate, excuse me, I don't know the legality term, the legal term, what they're called, but to see if he was the dates and times that he was served by at all. If he didn't flash the light in my pupils, he didn't do anything, he didn't use a fire. You know, he's trying to accuse me of being on drugs, and he should get my medicine. If he would have counted it, I could have gotten notes from my doctor saying I had bad it for days, that that's why I'm wearing blue like I am. It couldn't possibly be now, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to cut you off. 
Well, Are you asking me to file a motion because of drug recognition expert? If that's what it takes, yes, sir. Do you need to be a doctor or a psychologist that can testify to the effects of, of my medication when you're on and off of it? That would help too. I know we work in pay for those sorts of things. I would like that to be done, and I would like to know the certifications. Uh, there's like about three or four other like little motions I can't think of the top of my head right now, but I've asked you several times. And you only talk to me once, maybe twice in six months, and then the last week you called me like three times in a row. How long did this party go? I'd like for my new lawyer to help me do this, but I can help. Please get the lawyer as soon as possible, because I don't know how much longer I can take from there, knowing that I should not be here in the first place, just based off of the discovery loan. Right. So, and I've told you that uh, both of these cases are right now set for trial. And I've told you that the state needs to file a motion. I told you that. Do you remember what I told you about that? A motion for what? I don't understand. You're, you know, my attorney's supposed to file a motion for me to make sure they're current, so that I, should I be found guilty? I don't spend any more time here. I want to get back to my life, okay? I have no mother or father here. My dad had Parkinson's, you know, my dad's gone uh, just before this. I had a three year, and then it's a passion break of 150 days. And now I always go drinking from my, I never drink during my holidays, and, and for New Year's, that's my resolution. I always start right before Christmas. I go all the way to like my birthday in June. Okay. And that's how I've been here for the last eight to ten years. So I was not under the influence. The owner of the place that the staff was about to party, when I thought everybody knows there that I don't drink, and the owner doesn't drink. Okay. I was getting a kid ride home. Is it, is it a crime to get a kid ride home and a crime to We're not here to discuss the fact of the case, Mr. Terrell. And the officer got by me in two seconds and came over the first time I went to go. Mr. Train. Terrell, Mr. Terrell, right now. Uh, we're just talking about, like I said, whether or not you're entitled to have me order a new attorney be appointed to your case. If you go into the facts of your case, your lawyer is warning you that that could be harmful to you because the, because the prosecutor is listening to our conversation. He's part of this hearing. So you, you can you can take your, let me, let me finish, let me finish, sir. Let me finish. I mean, you can take your advice, uh, your attorney's advice or leave your attorney's advice, but he's telling you now's not the time to talk to the facts of your case. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to consider the facts of your case right now because that's not relevant to this hearing. Okay? You don't have to apologize. He's what he's he's still hold on. He's still serving as your attorney, and so he's advising you not to talk about the facts of your case. All right. Let's focus on the let's focus on the issues that we have today, which is whether or not Mr. Gordon has performed uh competently as an attorney. So there was an yeah, issue. So hold on, hold on, let, let me finish. Let me finish. So Mr. Gordon, yeah. there was the issue of a, it sounds like there, there's a complaint about um, informing uh, Mr. Trell that he could be facing up to two years in jail. Correct. There's an issue about uh, filing a motion to reduce bond. Correct. Um, there's an issue about filing a motion to consolidate. And bond then, the, uh, okay. Um, and then uh, it sounds like there was a request to try to get uh, an expert appointed that may otherwise assist him. At least that's what he's saying right now, that he wanted to have an, you know, perhaps an expert that he feels could testify about his condition that may otherwise uh, uh, help the defense. Is that correct, Mr. Terrell? Uh, yes, the first thing he said, as well as um, if I could have a, a qualified uh, psychologist or a doctor that can help me explain what's going on with here. Okay, so the, the, this, this is these are the things that he has um, raised in this motion. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, as far as the two years offer, back, I have a copy of a letter that I sent him back on October 16, 2020. I explained to him what the offer is. Uh, may, may we please put the offer on the record? You want me to put the offer on the record? Sure, or state you can do that. Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead, Mr. Newt. Can you please put the offer on the record? The offer in uh, 18 CT 2900 is adjudication, $1,000 fine, 12 months probation, no early termination, special condition um, of probation, 45 days jail, 12 months driver's license suspension, uh, substance abuse evaluation, follow recommendations, random testing, no alcohol, uh, victim impact panel, DUI school, 
a 10 day impound of all vehicles, 50 community service hours, a court costs and costs of prosecution. In 18 MM 2801, the offer is adjudication, 30 days jail, uh, credit time served, all costs. The 30 days jail is to run concurrent or consecutive? Um, it's to run consecutive. Consecutive, that's the offer. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, Mr. Trill. I think it's concurrent. Oh, oh, you know, my apologies. You, you, he, he, I, the, uh, it was further down in the note. It is concurrent. All right. So concurrent time is the offer. Thank you. Mr. Gorgian, yes, is that the offer that was conveyed by you to your client? Yes, sir. I have a copy of that letter sent to him. Okay. All right, for the record, I'm reviewing a letter that's dated October 16th, sent uh, to Mr. Terrell at the Collier County Jail. And it, it contains the offer that was just uh, described by the state. All right, this letter, um, let's go back to Mr. Gorgian. This letter does accurately reflect the offer that was just described by the state. All right. And also your honor- And I'm uh, sorry, it was October 16th of, of 2020. Go as ahead. As far as uh, one of the issues I think you raised, which uh, I concur with it, is the documents that the video that I've gotten from the sheriff office as well as my prior predecessor, uh, Mr. Ian Carr, I only got one of the two videos. I actually had to, I think, request twice. And I had, um, I can't find it right now, but um, back on November 13, 2020, I requested a video and uh, they responded back again on, I'm sorry, they responded to, they responded to me on uh, November 13th. Another uh, response was November 17th, they gave me one video. And then subsequently, I requested another video again. And this time, they gave me two documents. This was on uh, January 21st, and I got both videos. Uh, so, and also, my prior predecessor, Mr. Ian Clark, had only given me one video. Um, and we watched both videos uh, while he's in custody. I showed him both videos. So as far as I've, I've seen some issues with the videos, and I told him that I wish to have some of the. Uh, you would like to have some redactions. Yeah, but that's not my word. That's the state's word. Okay. And I don't want to get too much into trial strategy. No, no. So I've addressed that with him. Um, so that's another issue that I, I, I've seen that he's raised. Okay. Now, this is the first time I'm hearing that he wants a psychiatrist to assist him. I, as far as my evaluation of him, I've done this since 2003. I do not find him confident to proceed. He understands everything that's going on. I don't see him meeting the requirements of a mental health expert as far as competency is uh, is concerned. Based on the totality of the circumstances, uh, like I said, this is the first time I'm hearing about the mental health psychiatrist assistant. Uh, I don't know if that's what he wants, but I guess it's the first time I'm hearing about that. Right. I, I, I don't know how the psychiatrist is going to help him at trial. And what about the motion to consolidate? Motion to consolidate. I've said this on record twice. It's not my position. It's not my job to file a motion to consolidate. No. So it may or may not be beneficial for the defense to do so. I don't know. That's, correct. that's certainly not for me to decide. I can't even file a motion to consolidate on. I don't know if I have grounds or, or feeling to move file a motion to consolidate. That misdemeanor and the traffic cycle. That's something that's good to the state because they are the plaintiff in this case. All right. I have filed a motion to consolidate traffic tickets with the DUI, for example, but sure. I've never seen a motion to consolidate by defense to file. It would be extremely rare. Correct. Yes, I agree. 
But but I, I don't think you're prohibited from doing it. I just it, I agree with you. It's a pretty rare thing to do. I I've never done it before. I don't. I I'm it's usually it's usually done by the state if it's going to happen. I agree. Right. And it's my position that it would be in his detrimental interest to file the file such a motion. I understand. Secondly, another issue is redaction. It is not my job to redact the video. It is for the state to redact the video if they wish to present the video at trial. He wants everything in the video to be included. Uh, I'm talking about the, the first video he's talking about, which is the same video. He wants every. I I do not think, and I explained to him that two years from now. Whatever time frame it is, in the future, he's going to come back and say, "Why didn't you do your job? Why didn't you ask him to be done?" I've done enough three point eight five zero as as a as a prosecutor, as as far as representing people who have been um, filed for three point eight five zero, as well as being on the stand, being accused of ineffective assistance of counsel. That is not my position to redact the video for the state. Uh, well, there, 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 there are certain circumstances when a motion in limine is appropriate prior to trial to get certain portions of videos excluded. There are other circumstances where it's beneficial to the state to wait for the defense to wait and see what the state does and make appropriate objections as they come up. Correct. It, as, as the circumstances merit. Correct. That happens usually when the state gives me a redacted video and I have some objections to the redaction, so on and so forth. That's not happening here. Okay. So that's the video we're talking about. Now that being said, Mr. Gorsuch, let me be clear. Given the limits we've had with the pandemic and the ability to even get jurors into the building, if this case is going to be one that goes to trial and you want some redactions done to that video, I do. You know, I'm, I'm putting the cart before the horse a little bit here, but let me make clear. I expect you to communicate your desire to have those redactions done prior to trial and communicate those to the state, because if we're mid-trial. And you suddenly object to some portion of the video being presented, we're going to have a major problem because that takes time to do. So we'll get to that. But if you think that there are redactions that need to be done, that needs to be communicated to the state. And if there's a disagreement about that, we can address it in a motion pre-trial. But we can't have a trial where we're halfway through the trial and suddenly you say, "I need redactions done on this video." Well, that's the problem. That is the problem in a way. Okay. I've never. I've always asked the state to reject. He wants completely the video as is being introduced into evidence. I see. Okay. Well, that's a different matter. Um, trial strategy itself is one thing or another. That's 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 between an attorney and a client. And at the end of the day, my understanding is the attorney is ultimately the one who decides trial strategy. Um, that was my understanding, at least as far, at least when it comes to a determination of whether or not there's counsel. Um, in the matter. All right. Um, I think did we cover all of Mr. Terrell's issues that have been raised? Uh, in a motion, I think when he's talking about the motion to certificate, I think from the jail attorneys in there, they told him about DREs, drug recognition experts in the DUI case. I've heard that before. That um, this this uh, uh, the the uh, was Matthew Kenny. Yes, the, the 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 issue with obtaining the certificates of the officers. What what exactly right. what exactly is your understanding of that, Mr. Gorgia? Um, that's what he's alleging to. Um, that that horizontal gangs and stagnant because he's not a DRE certified, that he cannot testify to that. Okay. Well, that that's that's pretty much standard. Correct. Okay. And I don't know. All right, so Mr. Terrell, is that was that the issue you were talking about that? You know, the, if this if this officer does, is not qualified as an expert, he cannot testify about the horizontal gaze gaze astigmatis, the part with the eyes. Is that it? Uh, yes, sir. And, and that time he just came like uh, he waited for everyone as he wrote on the ticket and for drugs and pencil, and he wrote not a charge, which is why I assumed that I wasn't being charged. Okay, which I shouldn't be here today. Um, but yes, sir, it is. That's what I need. I need a expert. To come and to testify of my condition, and I believe that he has no uh, right to testify. And he says he says in the video, "You're on drugs." He accuses me of being on drugs, but then yet he doesn't uh, answer my medication, take pictures, or see how many are there or anything. He just says, "You're on drugs," and accuses me, and he's basically humiliating me 
Uh, it's like it happened to me in the video when I was saying that I'm a drug addict or something. And I, I've been, I, many times I'm going to help my parents stay away from drugs. Sir, sir, hold on. I need to stop you there. That that part is not for me to consider right now. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. All right. I think believe that was all the issues that was being raised. Is that correct? I believe so. All right. Mr. Terrell, were there any other issues with Mr. Gorge about things that you feel he did not do that he should have, or did do that he should not have? Well, basically, I just feel like he was. Uh, Dropping the ball on getting this, this uh, taken care of. I mean, if you did the video, and there's just important things in the video that I think it's a whole marathon case. And I believe that if I had another attorney, they would have worked towards the defense of the DUI rather than it seeming that he was waiting until the last minute and just not doing anything. I was seeing as far as how I was treated. Um, he maybe watched that part of the video later and said, oh, wow, you know, they kind of really. All right. determination at this time uh it's okay mr Gorsh. uh the court's prepared to make a determination this time with regard to the various issues uh number one with the indicating to you that you could be uh, uh facing up to two years in the county jail that that is a requirement of a defense attorney to inform the defendant of the potential maximum exposure being faced by a defendant if he failed to do that that would be a problem it is crucial for a defense attorney to explain to a defendant what he might be facing or what he or she might be facing, which is what Mr. Gorgian did. The maximum potential exposure in this case is in fact two years. Is that, is that all? Well, well, the DUI is not, is it a DUI first? The DUI second, then it's the maximum exposure is two years in this, in this matter. Um, so it, on that regard, Mr. Gorgian uh, acted competently. With regard to um, the obtaining of the videos, Mr. Gorgian, uh, to be clear for the record, was appointed uh, as counsel when regional counsel conflicted off this case in October. Uh, in that time, uh, Mr. Gorgian received discovery from prior counsel as well as reached out to the state and obtained uh, additional discovery, which was a second video. Uh, that discovery was reviewed with the defendant. Um, and therefore, I, I do not find that Mr. Gorgian acted uh, or, or failed to perform competently in that regard with regards to the discovery in this case, meaning the videos. Uh, a, when, when an attorney disagrees with a defendant about what to do with that evidence and whether or not to try to exclude certain evidence, that's trial strategy. And I don't think that this disagreement rises to the level of uh, the court being able to find that Mr. Gorgian is acting incompetently as an attorney. This is simply a disagreement between counsel and client and will have to be resolved between the two of you, but certainly would not be grounds for uh, a finding that Mr. Gorgian performed incompetently. Uh, there was a motion to uh, to reduce bond filed and heard by the court. And so that that was done by counsel. Um, Judge, hold, on, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. There was, there was another issue was for, as far as the, the certificate. Um, it does not appear, Mr. Rosinko, uh, we can cover this now. Are any of the witnesses that we're going to testify in this trial uh, certified drug recognition experts? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, Your Honor. I have to look into it further. I'm going to need an answer from that about that, Mr. Rosinko. This case is set for trial on Monday. This is an issue that was raised. You're going to have to answer that question for me. And you intend to introduce any of these witnesses as drug recognition experts? 
This case is going to be heard on, the, on Monday for trial call. One moment, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. Therefore, there are no certificates uh, of their of uh, their training or expertise that could be obtained or would otherwise be relevant to their testimony because they will not be permitted to testify as experts if the state is not uh, 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 bringing them forward to testify in that regard. Um, so on that ground as well, uh, the court would not find uh, that Mr. Gorton has acted incompetently. Um, and so on those grounds, Mr. Trell, listen, the, the way the law is written, you know, a disagreement with a lawyer and his client about how to handle a case is not sufficient grounds for me to discharge um, your court appointed attorney. Um, and so uh, I'm going to deny your motion for new counsel at this time. So what I can inform you is that here are your two options at this point. You can either go forward with Mr. Gorgian or you can represent yourself. But I'm not going I don't have sufficient grounds to give you a different lawyer at this point. What would you like to do? Okay, so in my understanding, they said, um, and this is being recorded, the state says everything's been running current, right? That's the offer, yes, sir. Okay, and uh, I don't understand how they can force me to go to trial myself, I mean, without representation. Right? Well, no, you, 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 still, you still have a lawyer. Hold on, you still have a lawyer. It's Mr. Gordon. He is still your lawyer, or you can choose to go on your own. Those are your two choices. Okay, so I mean, he did this on a daily and another story. I don't know if such a uh, charge, please uh, forgive me. However, I mean, he didn't do anything until January 21st, the six months, and then that court got, now we have a trial on Monday. I mean, if I was to say I wanted to defend myself, how long would I have to prepare for the trial? If you tell me you want to represent yourself, I will continue this matter. I'll grant you a continuance right away, so you have time to, to prepare for this. Um, but you will not get a new court-appointed attorney. Um, okay, um, Judge, are they going to be calling this officer? Is that the fact that I was on drugs right now? I I don't know I don't know which witnesses the state would produce, but they're going to have to produce witnesses to prove their case. Otherwise, you're going to be found not guilty. Um, you should have, uh, I'm not going into that with you, sir. My question for you is, do you want to continue to have Mr. Gorgian to represent you or do you want to represent yourself? All right, um, I don't need to answer on the question. I'll get to that. No, 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 you're going to get to my question now. What do you want to do? Is he going to file other motions? That's all I want to know. That's what I was going to ask. I apologize, but I want to know if he's going to file the motions that I'm asking you to file to get me someone to testify to my condition. That's Mr. Gorshin, do you have any other motions you wish to file before no, trial? I was going to ask you to address the motion, but no, I'm not going to file any issues. I'm not going to file a motion in the sense that he's asking for me to have a person declared insane. Okay. No, I'm not no, no. I want someone to testify to my disability. Okay. Well, we don't have anybody listed for that purpose. No. Your Honor. Yes, sir, Mr. Rosinko. Um, and if I may, uh, maybe there's an error in showcase. This isn't set for trial. Yes, it is. Uh, it, it doesn't say it in showcase. We... Correct. I'm correct. We set it for today. Neither cases are. Okay. We we had set it for today for status with the expectation we were going to trial correct. on Monday. Correct. correct. But it doesn't show that it's set for trial. But that's, that's, I, I was expecting to go to trial on Monday. Right, that was the expectation. We set it for status. It was, it was supposed to show that we were going to go to trial on Monday. That, that, that's where we were at. That's where we were at at the pre-trial hearing. That was the, that was the expectation. So, if you want to have an answer to the question. So, so for, first of all, is there a pending motion to consolidate? Not like no, I'm asking from the state, from anybody. Is there a pending motion to consolidate? No, Your Honor, not from the state. All right. So here's the deal. My question stands and I need an answer. 
do you want Mr. Gorshin to represent you, yes or no? I don't want to upset you, Judge. What I want to know is... is no, 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 no. You're not upsetting me, but you... It's not the American print. They just lied to under the recording. Okay. I'm going to give you time to decide that. Right now, you have Mr. Gorgian. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to set this for Monday. I can wait here. Let him think. I've been sitting here for a while. No, I don't have time for this because the jail needs that room for first appearances. So I appreciate that. The decision needs to be made, sir, or I'm going to have to continue your case. I don't have time to go back and forth with you. You need to tell me what you want to do. You either need to have tell me Mr. Gorgian will continue to represent you or represent yourself. Now you can you can go on by your by you can go on your own at any point in the future at any point you can fire mr gordon and say i'm going to represent myself so you don't so you can stick with mr so you can stick with mr gordon right now and choose to go by yourself later and that's fine Kind of hard decision to make when I didn't listen to anything I had to say. I mean, is it being ran for anything or not? Yes. Your jail time is going to run concurrent, sir. If you tweet out today, you get off today. You have plenty of free time, sir. All those other conditions. I'm not saying I was saying I didn't mean it. Okay. Um, so we're not going to. You're not going to enter a plea. So the question is, we are going to be setting this matter for trial Monday morning at nine o'clock for trial call. Is Mr. Gorgian going to be your lawyer on Monday? Yes or no? All right. Now you understand. Let me be very clear. I don't know when I'm going to have a jury again. Right now with the pandemic, we're having a very hard time getting jurors in the building. I have jurors coming next week. If I continue your case, I cannot guarantee you time before a jury anytime in the near future. I wish I could under normal times I could, but I can't do that right now. Okay, well, I won't get a jury eventually, right? How long would it take? It could take months before I can have a jury again. I honestly don't know, sir. I, I, and that's what I'm saying. You're in custody. You're telling me you're not guilty. Next week is my chance. My next week is my chance to to give you your day in court before a jury. I cannot guarantee when I can do it again. Do you really want me to continue this matter? Yes, I do. I don't mind. I don't mind. All right. Be here Monday. I'll be here Monday. Let me do this. I'm still. I'll leave it set for calendar call on Monday. And you want to keep Mr. Gorgian as your lawyer right now, or no? No. All right. No. Hang out. Stand by. Be on Zoom, Mr. Gorgian, just in case the gentleman changes his mind. Oh. I can come in. I can come in. I, 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 it's gonna, it's gonna be on Zoom. It's gonna be on Zoom. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. Both cases are set for calendar call Monday, the eighth at nine o'clock. As of right now, uh, Mr. Gorgian, um, you know, you are discharged. However. Do the court of courtesy just come in on the zoom call in case mr trial changes his mind i can reappoint you immediately i'm going to ask you to still join in on the zoom call on monday um just in case mr trail changes his mind and would like you to have, be counsel i don't want mr Trell to be denied the opportunity to have a day before a jury he's in custody he's telling me he's not guilty i want mr Trell to have a chance to have a trial if he changes his mind over the weekend i want to give him that opportunity fair enough all right. Well, I don't want him to speak to my child. Excuse me, I don't want him to listen to my child. What's that? I would like to prefer not to be involved in my child. All right. Okay. Well, then we'll have to have a whole other conversation on Monday. Um, do you want me to bring the clothes here just in case? Yeah, but not Monday. We're not ha we're not picking a jury Monday. Okay. We wouldn't be picking a jury till Tuesday. Okay. So okay. Monday, Monday is strictly Zoom. It's a status. I had sentencing before Judge Porter in Lee County for a sentencing. So, uh, what time is that? At one o'clock. You have a sentencing before Judge Porter at one o'clock? Yes, sir. So. All right. Well, well the trial calls at nine. Correct. So, so let's. I'll um, notice a conflict, scheduling conflict, just in case. But, um, but we're not for sure where we're going to go to trial tomorrow. Monday or not. We're definitely not picking a jury on Monday. Monday is just a calendar call. Okay. All right. So as long as you can get on Zoom on Monday, we can discuss this further. Yes, sir. All right. 
All right, thank you, everybody. Mr. Trell, I will speak to you on Monday, all right? Yes, sir, thank you, have a blessed day, man. You too, sir. All right, you guys can switch over to the monitor, okay? All right. Mr. Eve, you're there? Good afternoon, yeah. I'm here. Good afternoon, ma'am. It looks like we were able to get your client available in front of a, a camera, okay? Great, thank you. Well, but I, I do want to do this quickly, so let's go ahead and call this very quickly because uh, the first appearance judge really does need uh, the courtroom and the polycom. All right, so this is going to be Oliver Ramos Carrillo, 20 CT 1859. State, could you go ahead and give the clerk the terms of the plea right now so she can get that ready? The plea is uh, for count one, amend to DUI below uh, 0.15. Uh, adjudication, $1,000 fine, all costs, 12 months probation, no ET, uh, credit time served, 12 months driver's license suspension, uh, DUI school, uh, substance abuse evaluation, follow recommendations, random test testing, no alcohol, 10 day vehicle impound, victim impact panel, 50 community service hours uh, to count two, uh, no valid driver's license, adjudication, credit time served and costs. All right, Mr. Reeve, you those are the terms as you understood it? Yes, Your Honor. All right, those were conveyed to your client? Yes, Your Honor. All right, he's now present on the video. Does he speak Spanish? He does, Your Honor. All right, we have an interpreter present in the courtroom. Good afternoon, sir. Well, good afternoon, Your Honor. All right. All right, so this is 20CT1859. Uh, Mr. Ramos Carrillo, can you hear me? Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes. I see uh, we have a video on here on our side for me. Oh, all right, hold on. Yeah, you turn the camera off. Yeah, it's had the little red. It's got a green light on the on the eye, isn't it? Isn't no, it's got a little red camera symbol in the bottom left yeah, corner. You turn that. the camera off. Sure, what happened, Judge? Let me uh, exile, maybe go back in. All right. One moment, folks. There we go. All right, we're back. Must have been a bad connection, I guess, Your Honor. No problem, sir. Thank you. All right, Ms. Ramos Carrillo, can you hear me? Sir? I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I, I heard Ms. Rose. Did I hear Ramos Carrillo. Okay. It's because my, my, my so Spanish is horrendous. Sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, perfectly. All right. All right, sir, I have your attorney uh, on Zoom with me. And uh, she has informed me that you wish to uh, enter into a plea agreement with the state. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All right. And did you go over the terms of the plea with your attorney? That's right. That's All right. right. And are you prepared to enter your plea at this time? All right. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I accept. All right, please put your hand down. All right, the state attorney in this case is going to ask you a few questions. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, can I please get your full name and date of birth? 
Por favor, díganme su nombre completo y su fecha de nacimiento. Oliver Fernando Ramos Carrillo, mi fecha de nacimiento es el 03-29-78. Oliver Fernando Ramos Carrillo, my date of birth is 03-29-1978. You have been charged with, in count one, a DUI. Ha sido acusado en cargo uno de DUI. Do you understand that the maximum for that charge is 180 days in jail? Yes. ¿Usted entiende que el máximo, eh, la pena máxima en ese caso es 180 días de cárcel? Entiendo. I understand. Count two, you've been charged with no valid driver's license. Do you understand that the maximum for uh, that, that charge is a second uh, degree misdemeanor? Do you understand the maximum for that charge is 60 days in county jail? Yes, I understand. To that charge, how do you wish to plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No, no contest, Your Honor. Do you understand the terms of the plea agreement? That's right. Have you read and signed a copy of the plea form? Can you repeat the question, please? Sorry. Have you read and signed a copy of the plea form? That's right. I have read it. Do you understand all the rights listed on that form you'll be giving up by entering this plea today? Usted entiende todos los derechos que están en ese formulario a los cuales usted va a renunciar al declararse en un discurso. Sí. Yes. Are you entering this plea because you believe it's in your own best interest? Usted se está declarando en un discurso porque usted cree que esto es algo que le conviene hacer. Eh, lo tengo en sus manos, por eso. I leave it in your hands. What was the question? Are you entering into this plea because you believe it's in your own best interest? Yes. Are you currently under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? No. No. Are you taking any medication? No. No. Do you suffer from any mental illnesses? No. No. Have you discussed the terms of this plea agreement and the rights you're giving up with your attorney? Well, that is that is correct. She has kept me informed. Are you satisfied with your attorney's advice? Yes. Do you understand that if you're not a United States citizen, you may be subjected to removal or deportation as a result of this plea? Sí. Yes. Do you understand that if you're deported as a result of this case, it will not be the basis to withdraw this plea? Yes. Do you need any additional time to discuss any of this with counsel? No. No. Do you understand that uh, DUI is an enhanceable crime, meaning that if you commit this crime again in the future, you could commit, you could receive more jail or prison time, a higher fine, and or a longer driver's license revocation period? 
Si usted entiende que si usted es, usted entiende que de huir es un delito que se puede tornar más y más serio, eso quiere decir que si usted es eh, encontrado culpable de este delito en el futuro, va, puede enfrentar una sentencia carcelaria, una sentencia de prisión más larga, podría que tener que pagar una multa más alta y su licencia de conducir podría ser suspendida por más tiempo. I understand. Your Honor, the state tenders to play. Uh, I reviewed the probable cause of David. And find that there is a sufficient factual basis in the. And counsel, I, I, I am aware that this gentleman has uh, an ice hole. Yeah. And you've covered any potential immigration consequences of this plea? Yes, Your Honor, with the client as well as with his family members. Very well. Then having considered the colloquy, I find the plea to be freely, knowingly, and voluntarily entered. Therefore, I will accept the plea and impose sentence as follows. Starting with count one, for the charge of DUI, first offense, is this um, is the state going forward with the uh, enhancement of 0.15 or no? No, Your Honor. Your the state amends the charges to uh, statute 3 316.193 below 1, uh, 0.08. Okay. The, the, to translate, uh, no, it's just DUI first offense. You don't want to interpret the You don't have to. No. Can you repeat that now? The state, please tell the gentleman, you know, no, the, the state indicated that no, it, they're just going forward without the enhancement. La fiscalía acaba de indicar que no, que ellos van a proceder sin eh, poner una, hacer un, una petición para un delito más serio. All right. Um, then, okay. on, then on count one. Entonces, en el cargo uno. Adjudication of guilt. Yes, sir. Dictamen de culpabilidad. Uh, 12 month license revocation. La licencia de conducir va a ser suspendida 12 meses. $388 in court costs. $1,000 fine. Una multa de $50 public defender application fee. Una cuota de solicitud para el abogado de oficio de $50. $50 cost of prosecution. $50 es el costo del procesamiento policial. 12 months of probation. 12 meses de libertad probatoria. Special conditions of probation are as follows. Las condiciones especiales de la libertad probatoria son las siguientes. Uh, 50 hours of community okay. service. Okay, 50 hours of service for the community. You may not possess or consume any alcoholic beverages. No puede poseer ni consumir bebidas alcohólicas. You're entering bars, taverns, saloons. No puede ir a barras, tabernas, salones. Pubs, lounges, or package stores. Pubs, eh, lounges, or tiendas de paquetes. Or any other business whose primary purpose is to sell alcohol. O ningún otro negocio en el que el negocio principal es la venta de alcohol. You may not have any alcohol in your residence. You must attend DUI school appropriate phase and successfully complete it. You must attend a substance abuse evaluation and follow any recommended treatment. Subject to random breathalyzer in your analysis at your own expense. You must attend a victim impact panel and successfully complete it. 10 day vehicle immobilization. And there is an agreement that there shall be no early termination of probation. Count two. Cargo dos. Uh, driving without a valid license. Manejar sin licencia de conducir válida. Adjudication of guilt. Condena de culpabilidad. Time served. Tiempo ya cumplido. Composite costs. Y, con, y 
costos duplicados. All right. Did I get everything correct? Sí, lo dije todo correctamente. Sí. Yes. <laughs> Counsel, you agree? I agree, Tony. All right. All right. All right, good luck to you, sir. Take care of yourself, okay? IJC, thank you very much for accommodating us today. We really appreciate it. Yes. Yes, both case, both charges were under one case number. Okay, thank you. Thank you, IJC. This should be, take care. Take care, Your Honor. Have a good afternoon. You too, thank you. Thank you. All right, I don't think we have anybody else in custody, correct? For a plea today, no one else in custody? All right, Mr. Miller, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your patience. You there? Sorry, Judge, I had you on unmute and I muted you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can hear you fine, yes, sir. Your Honor, thank you. Uh, let me turn the camera to show you that my client is actually with me in my office right now. Okay. Uh, Hello. Raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Judge. And that's why I'm wearing a mask in my office. I understand. Uh, Your Honor, this is my, my client's uh, motion to set aside the bench warrant and the bond is treacher. And, and the several reasons the best I can understand speaking with my client with his uh, girlfriend is that this was set for a hearing i think on friday and the court revoked uh my client's bond mr Desamore's uh, bond my understanding is that he never received notice of that and that's why he does not he did not attend uh that hearing but maybe most importantly judge at least in, in my opinion well, that's important for due process purposes. Uh, however, my understanding is, as it relates to the Soberlink and when that was ordered at 24 hour court, there was not a Creole interpreter uh, in jail at the time. He wasn't really aware of that particular condition as it relates to no alcohol at all. Um, and in fact, he was released from the jail prior to uh, the gentleman from Soberlink uh, informing him of uh, the parameters of Soberlink. Once he was out, it was actually the bonding agency that realized that he did not have Soberlink hooked up. Uh, they contacted his uh, girlfriend who's here now and they met in a um, Walmart parking lot right by the courthouse to go over the instructions. Um, again, there was no interpreter his girlfriend who is here did the best she could. I've asked her and she said she does not recall uh, anything about no alcohol. Okay, well here, let, 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 let me do this. Um, I will tell you, Mr. Miller, your client was represented by counsel at that hearing. Uh, he was represented by the public defender's office at that hearing. Um, and judges, my understanding that his assigned public defender uh, was not at the hearing either that somebody was covering for her and and quite frankly i don't well my client's telling me he never got notice all right well here's what here's what i can do i mean state filed a motion at least counsel was properly noticed um state would you like to be heard uh yes your honor um uh as as uh, as was already said, the defendant was represented by the public defender's office at, at the hearing. Um, essentially, we're just you know having a, a, a rehearing on the motion to revoke. Um, you know, and it's kind of just like a second second bite at the apple here. Um, he and actually after the appearance or the notice of appearance was filed on February first, he had a positive test on the second. Um, so you know, I I, I don't know. You know, it was never mentioned that he needed that that he you know, he didn't understand the, the terms of the contract during the hearing, um, or that there there would have been an interpreter for it. Uh, I uh, I don't see any basis uh, to uh, quash the warrant. All right. Well, Judge, I can tell you in my motion it does state that 
uh, my client did not understand the conditions. And well, here's, here's the problem, Mr. Miller. I don't have the creole interpreter right now, so he doesn't understand everything that we're saying right now. Um, His girlfriend is here, Judge, and, and I. It's my understanding my office notified the court and requested a creole interpreter to appear today. All right. Did you reach out to the interpreter's office? Let me. Uh, may I have one moment and get my paralegal in here? Sure. Hey, who did you contact to get a uh, Creole interpreter there? Do we have a printout of that? Yeah, I do have the folder. Come in here and show me. All right, thanks. Judge, it's my understanding she went through the, oh, I'm looking at it now, through the interpreter's uh, website. All right. Okay. I, I found it. Yeah, thank you, though. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to I'm going to treat this as well. Here's the problem. You know, here's here's what I'm running into. You know, my preference would be to treat this as a motion to set bond, where I could unequivocally convey to your client uh, what his obligations are as his conditions of release. But I'm unable to do that right now because I don't have a court interpreter. Um, Judge, if I may, I can inform the court that today yes, sir. I told my client unequivocally with the benefit of his uh, girlfriend who's here, uh, who was not with me with uh, my client on Monday when he came into my office. Uh, but we have spoken about this um, in depth since I've been waiting. I signed on at one judge because the court, C just said it was at one showcase, but whatever. So we've been sitting here for the last 45 minutes uh, talking about it. All right. And Your Honor, um, it, but uh, you know, the, the state would like to say maybe it should be done with a, a court in interpreter because you know, uh, theoretically this has been explained to him in the past uh, and there's been miscommunication problems here. Uh, 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 that the, uh, the uh, uh, Mr. Miller's alleging. So, um, you know, he, he, he was advised, he should have been advised before and the attorney should have made the argument before. I understand. The problem I have is a problem that has come up multiple times with this type of an issue is I've got a jury, come, you know, I've got juries coming in this week. Um, it's too late as of today to set this matter for a trial because I don't know if the state would otherwise have witnesses to be prepared. No one's under subpoena. I don't know when I'm going to have jurors again. Um, so if I refuse to set any conditions of release on this case, this gentleman can sit in the jail indefinitely while waiting for us to resolve this matter. And so while I'm a little hesitant to do so, uh, I'm, I'm going to grant Mr. Miller's motion at this time um, for that reason more than anything else. Um, I'm going to reinstate the original conditions of release. Which were, and I want to make, make sure that this is unequivocal, Mr. Miller, and I'm relying upon you to properly convey this to your client. Um, let's see, where is the first appearance order? There it is. The original conditions of release, there needs to be a bond posted of $2,000 on count one, $3,000 on count two. He may not possess or consume any alcohol under any circumstances. And does he still have the Sober Lake device? Yes, Your Honor. Right, right here. He is obliged to continue on with the original schedule. All, all original conditions um, will be imposed. Um, state, if there's a violation, by all means, file your motion. Let Mr. Miller know. We will get, we will get you back in front of me very quickly. 
Thank you. Um, but I'm, I'm going to err on the side um, of, of caution, Mr. Miller. I think it's most appropriate, like I said, especially since I can't guarantee you a trial in the immediate future if, if I were to take your client into custody. I understand, Judge. Um, so please make sure uh, that, that he is fully aware of his obligations. Um, and uh, Mr. Roy, can you uh, please send me a proposed order, send it, uh, email it to my JA so I can sign it uh, today and get it to uh, CCSO warrants? Judge, I have one. I'll uh, walk it over to my paralegal right now and get it to you. Reflecting, you know, specifically the conditions of release that are being uh, that are being placed. Um, here's okay. I have. I'm going to be on the bench for a little while, and I'd rather just have an order there that I can sign and get over the warrants quickly. And Judge, may I email? I have what I have is the order to quash warrant, reinstate bond. Yes, sir. Grant, granted, but um, do you do you want to write in the additional statements that you just if you, made? If you give me a blank line, I'll just write it in. Okay, that's what I'll do. Give me a blank line, email it to my J. I'll I'll fill it out, sign it, and get it to warrants. You'll um, have it within five minutes, Judge. Very good, sir. Thank um, you. Next, oh, hold on. Do we have an next court date on this? I'm sorry. I'm asking my clerk if we have a court date, an, an upcoming court date on this matter. Arraignments? Oh, well, it won't go to arraignment because you, you, he's got counsel. You're entering, you've already entered a plea of uh, not guilty with your notice of appearance. I have. Let's let's put this on a pretrial docket. This is my case, right? I would assume so. It's before me. Yeah. All right. Um, let's put this on my next pretrial, which is March 3rd, I believe, at 9 o'clock for pretrial conference. And did he have two cases or just sorry one? did he have two cases or just the one i'm only aware of one okay i just i thought there was some mention of a second case all right I'm all right gonna... all right thank you judge i'll get this to you now please do so march 3rd nine o'clock the pre-trial conference mr Rosinko, like i said if if there's any issues going forward file a motion make sure mr miller knows and we'll address it thank you Ron. all right thank, thank you, you take care Bye. Buenos dias, Judge. Or buenos tardy, I guess. Sure. <laughs> Have a happy Friday. Yeah. Judge, I've got Alexander Graham Summers. Yes, sir. 18 motion for early term of probation. Judge, yes. he was originally put on uh, two years probation, one year consecutive to another case. He completed the first year without early term as per the court order. The second year, he uh, has completed six months. He's completed all terms and conditions. We've attached an email from probation to say that he is eligible and he's completed all terms and conditions of probation. And we're asking the court to reward him for his gallant effort and uh, terminate his probation early. State? No objection, Your Honor. All right, this is 18 CT 2962. I reviewed the file. Uh, hearing no objection from the state, the motion is granted. I will submit an order, Judge. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Take care. Have a good weekend, Judge. You too. Mr. Payne? Good afternoon, Judge. Good afternoon. I have a motion to return property. Uh, to my recollection. <laughs> Brian Edward Wells, 20 MM 1702. You're trying to recover what? It's a firearm, Judge. Uh, the case was uh, dropped. Okay. It's in the custody of the sheriff's office? Yes. State? No objection, Your Honor. All right. Um, hearing no legal basis uh, for the court to um, order continued detention of these firearms, motion is granted. I'll uh, the order, Judge. I think okay. I had attached to my uh, motion, but I can, uh, I'll, I'll submit one directly to your office to make it easy. Please do. Thank you, sir. All right. Have a good All day right. and a good weekend. You too. All right. Um, Ms. Woodley, Mr. Clark, who'd like to go first? There you go. All right. This is a 20 CT 1268. Yes, ma'am, please announce your presence. Christina Woodley from the public defender's office. In regards to family, Edward is 20 CT 1268. This was set for a few months ago, but I actually wasn't aware of it until after you. I do apologize for being. 
it's fine. Uh, Did you need a moment to talk to your client? No, no. It's just, it's just, I just need to grab the information to offer it. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is it Mr. It's Mr. Racinko. Yep. Uh, Mr. Rosenko, is it uh, a withhold and uh, six months probation? So, it's not going to be a classification of the driver's course? Uh, it's, uh, it was withhold, $25 fine, cost, six months probation, uh, 12 hour driver improvement court. Uh, there was uh, no mention of early termination. Uh, would you consider doing a probation for termination of the driver's course? Um, oh, and also there was count two, which was uh, withhold $150 fine and costs. I have that down as a normal process. Please, why? Oh. Oh. No, it was a... a... Let, let me do this. Um, may, let me call Mr. Clark's case. I'll step off the bench and allow you two to talk for a moment, and then I'll come back when everyone's ready. Okay. <laughs> Because he's here, I'd like to be able to take care of his case today, but I'd, like, I'd rather just give you two a moment to speak and then I can, then we can go forward. Well, that's, that's one way to do it, but let me, let me go ahead and take Mr. Clark's case and then I said, I'll step off the bench and you two can talk and, and whenever you're ready, we'll, we'll be good. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> All right. 20 mm one five eight five. All right. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good. Okay. Count uh, one. Is the uh, possession of marijuana under that's going to be a withhold adjudication, six months probation, substance abuse authority for evaluation for recommendation, grant and testing, court costs, and cost for prosecution. We also ask for a uh, $50 reasonable counsel fee. Uh, right on count two, which is the possession of paraphernalia, that's going to be a withhold adjudication, six months probation, substance abuse evaluation for recommendation, grant and testing. Uh, concurrent uh, probation, obviously, and uh, the substance evaluation is also concurrent. Uh, composite costs and uh, we have resolved. All right. Sorry. Mr. Asinka, you agreed that those are the terms? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And uh, Mr. Esteban, are you prepared to accept that plea offer at this time? Yes, we can. What's that? Yes, the, the... That's what the state attorney is, is offering. Yes, sir. Do you want to accept those terms? Yeah. All right. Then please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to testify to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right. You can put your hand down, please. The state attorney who's on Zoom with me, he's going to ask you a few questions, okay? Go ahead, please. Sir, can I please get your full name and date of birth? Stephen Esther Byrne, February 18th, 1990. Sir, you have been charged with in count one, possession of marijuana, and in count two, possession of paraphernalia. Both are first degree misdemeanors. Do you understand that the maximum for that for those charges is uh, one year in county jail? Yes. To, that, to those charges, how do you wish to plea? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. Do you understand the terms of the plea agreement? Yes. Have you read and signed a copy of the plea form? Do you understand all the rights listed on that form you'll be giving up by entering this plea today? Are you entering into this plea because you believe it's in your own best interest? I believe this is the way I can be in my life for whatever is going on right now. So I can move forward and get back into school over a few crimes or wrong things. Where are you going to go to school? Uh, I'll think about going to FAMU or FSU. Uh, I went to FSU. Yeah. yeah, and FAMU is a great school too. Beautiful campus right on top of one of the biggest hills in town. Yeah, I'll think you know, two years in, you know, four years at, switching out at FSU. Good luck to you, sir. What do you want to study when you get there? Uh, 
uh, I wanted to be an accountant or a CPA or a business management. Okay. All right. That sounds really good. All right. Um, so yes, the question to your, the answer to your question of uh, whether he believes it's in his best interest, the answer is yes. All right, please continue, Mr. Rosenko. Uh, um, <clears throat> are you currently under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Okay. Are you taking any medication? Uh, no, but I'm, I'm in the mood. About the he's, he's, he's currently uh, to get the marijuana card. All right. Like, like any other prescription drug, sir, it's illegal to have it unless you have a prescription for it. You understand? All right. Do you suffer from any mental illnesses? Have you discussed the terms of this plea agreement and the rights you're giving up with your attorney? Are you satisfied with your attorney's advice? Do you understand that if you're not a United States citizen, you may be subjected to removal or deportation as a result of this plea? Do you understand that if you're deported as a result of this case, it will not be the basis to withdraw this plea? Do you need any additional time to discuss any of this with counsel? Your Honor, the state tenders the plea. the probable cause affidavit i do find that there's a sufficient factual basis and venue i've considered the colloquy and find the plea to be freely knowingly and voluntarily entered therefore will accept the plea and post sentence that follows for the charge of possession of marijuana count one withhold of adjudication six months i'm sorry withhold adjudication 220 dollars in court costs 50 dollars public defender application fee times two that's right there was a there was a subsequent one yep uh 50 public defender fee a regional council fee, excuse me, but it, it yeah. shows the same way in the system. Yeah, the application is to the public defender fee. It's to regional. All right, fifty dollar cost for prosecution, six months of probation, special conditions of probation under, or you must undergo a substance abuse evaluation, following recommended treatment. Is subject to random breathalyzer and your analysis at your own expense. This is to run concurrent with count two, possession of paraphernalia, withhold adjudication. Six months probation, substance abuse evaluation, find and recommended treatment, so it's random breathalyzing, your analysis, your own expense, and any composite costs. Good. Um, was this Mr. Esselbrun's only criminal case? Uh, currently? Yes. No, not currently, but ever. I believe he, he, he did a, a original situation where he was leaving. Uh, yeah, he was in no, you don't. You don't have to tell me what it was about. I just want to know if you have any. The reason I'm asking, because Mr. Clark, you know, you're trying to indicate you might want to go to university and you know be a CPA. Um, have you discussed with him, you know, uh, sealing and expungement, with, you know, is available with a withhold, and what happens if he violates his probation? I have read and again uh, reiterated that. Yeah, he's going to be violating the juvenile. No. Well, may I? Thank you, sir. What I'm, what I'm getting at, sir, is you're really close to either having a great future or not. And the difference is whether or not you have criminal convictions on your record, right? You're telling me you want to you want to get out of town, you want to go to Tallahassee, you want to go to school and make something out of your life, and that is fantastic. But here's the thing: you got six months of probation. If you violate your probation, 
you, one of the things that can't happen is that you can be convicted for this offense. Right now you're not convicted, right? It's not a formal conviction. If you get convicted, this will remain on your record forever. And that may cause problems if you try to get a state license, like to be a CPA, right? Um, but right now it's not a formal conviction. So if you successfully complete your, your probation, you'd be done with us. You can talk to someone like Mr. Clark and you may be able to get this sealed from your record. So you can go forward with your life, get a degree, be a professional and not have this harm you anymore. But if you mess up, it can really have very long reaching uh, impact on your life. You understand? You're a young man with a lot of promise and want to see you do well. And that's why I'm telling you this. You understand? Good luck, to you, sir. I'm, 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 I'm pulling for you. I want, you. I want you to see well. Go Knowles. I hope you go to Florida State. <laughs> Take care. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. What's that? How about toodles? I'm impartial. Yeah. Uh, there was a judge in Fort Myers who shall remain nameless, but he was um, he was a little scary. <laughs> but he would whenever he would slide off here. Toodles. Um, yeah. All right. Here's what I'm gonna do.